eyes to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk the Good morning. I was not sure if it was a, that, a practice or the life life. Life life. Thank you. Um, today, uh, the message is about being a servant. So I want you to think about what does that mean to you? A servant of God. And not only a servant of God, but the true servant of God. So let us think about that as we begin our worship on this morning. Um, you're probably asking what's behind me and why am I going to, am I going to sit down through the sermon? Probably, but uh, uh, not right now. So please stand as you're able as we uh, begin our worship with the, come on, Sharon, yeah, Sharon with the P. Say good morning, whoever's next to you. Very good. Let us sing together. We are called. Oh 
the ways that we humble ourselves is coming in the presence of God, asking for forgiveness. So this is a time for us to get ready in our hearts to ask God for uh, forgiveness. Let us confess together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon your abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We explore the earth with our apathy and greed. Feed us from the sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors and ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace and in Christ Jesus, God makes us righteous. Receive with glad heart the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. You may be seated, and I'm going to call the little ones, uh, all little children that are here this morning, come with Pastor Ramon. Pastor Ramon is going to show you something. He's going to show you, show you something really cool. Really cool, really cool. You know, one of the things that um, we're going to talk about today is about being of service. And that means just to help each other, to be a good helper. And uh, one of the disciples said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, he was like, like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Was like, yeah, like, yes. Like, we, we want to ask you a big, huge favor. And he said, come over here. And he said, he said, you know what he said? He said, well, what's your favor? He was, I, I, we want to be, when we are up in heaven with you, we want to take uh, the special place right next to you. And he was like, okay, let me tell you. All you got to do is one thing, serve each other. So I put this two right here, these two chairs, this little chairs right here. This looks very comfy, you know, and that's where the king might sit. Not me, Jesus, the king. And so, um, but then I, there's two chairs because they asked for a chair next to them, right? But you see what's in them? What's, on, what's sitting on them? No, it's not a bag. What do you think it is? What do you think it is? You want me to lift it? It's an apron, right? Because if you really want a place like that, well, come on, take it. And be of, of service to one another. And so that was the message that Jesus told the disciples, and that's the message you guys are going to hear. So on three, you're going to say Jesus, and you guys are going to go over to um, Patty. And you're going to learn more over there, okay? So on three, point out. One, two, three. Jesus. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. I'll see you in a bit, okay? And I'm going to invite everybody else to have your Bibles ready. Um, I'm going to ask you to open up your Bible. So um, if you don't have one, I'm going to give you one chance to redeem yourself from it. Um, just kidding. But uh, pull up your uh, cell phone, and um, you can either just find uh, Bible Gateway right there and or just type the verse and put nrsv right in front of it and it'll come up right on the top okay so uh let us pray sovereign god you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples of the earth Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading comes to us from Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 12. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. 
All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. This comes to us from Mark chapter 10, verses 35 through 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. And then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. One of my favorite weddings that I attend to is when the, uh, the groom comes and washes uh, the bride's uh, feet right there during the ceremony as an act of service, promising that um, he was going to serve her. Um, I think in order to, to understand, you know, what Jesus is talking about, we need to understand what service means. We, we can talk about being the servant of God all day long, but not until we understand what that what service means. 
and you know you 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 go to a restaurant you you expect good service you go to you know whatever you go and you you pay for you know even when you don't pay for you you expect good service um i think the first thing is in in order to understand what service means is that it's a, it's an act of love it's an act of love and that through that love you reflect God's image because God is love so it's an act of love that reflects God's image okay so when you when you service others when you help somebody when you go and do something for someone not for your own sake but for the sake of others you need to think about it's an act of love okay Paul in Ephesians if you have your Bible please open it up Ephesians 5 verse 1 and 2 Ephesians, uh, Paul is talking about what that is and how it looks like. Therefore, be imitators of God. Be imitators of God. I, I don't know if you get that, but I, I like the King James Version. The King James Version says, be followers of God. And the word follower, it, it, it means mimicking. See? See? It, it changes everything. Be, be not servant of God. Be imitators of God. Be a follower. Be a, someone that mimics who God is. And God is love. And that's why it's an act of love. Okay? So it's an act of love that reflects God's image. Now, pick, uh, Paul keeps saying, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. So, so we have a special place. Come and take it. You know, might not be very comfortable, you know, right? Um, first of all, I don't think my will fit in there, right? Oh, my goodness, too low. <laughs> Never mind. When you think about, you know, being on the right or left of Christ, we always think of have a, a very comfortable place where it's going to be a crown given, and some walker, this is the big chief, right? No, he's saying, take the apron. Be an imitator. Jesus came, the Son of God came, not to, not to be served, but to serve for the sake of others, to die on the cross for us. So when Paul is talking about God's children, we have a special place. Come and take it. And then keep, keep saying on verse number two, and live in love. What does that mean? Live in love. So everything you do, you're coming and going, you're wake up and sleeping, you're, you're doing and not doing, everything has to be done in love. I don't know if you went to listen to that song that I told you about, I um, um, forgot the name of him, King and Country, The Proof of You Love. It's an amazing song that speaks exactly about live your life in love. Live in love as Christ loved us. How is that? How did Jesus, uh, how did God love us? Well, it's right there on the cross. It's printed right on the center of it. For God so loved the world that he gave his, life, his only son, right? So it, that's what makes it very special. The love, the kind of love is agape. It's, a, it's, it's something that, you know, we might not even understand. We try to, but it's not easy. As Christ loved you and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Okay. I'm not asking you to memorize uh, Romans 2. Um, I'm sorry, Romans 12, 1 and 2. But do go back sometime and read that. And read it in the message translation, if you have a message translation, not the NRSV. I mean, the NRSV is, is great, but Romans 12, 1 and 2. I like it because it's, it's telling us how is it that Christ set an example that we follow, that we imitate, that we mimic. Everything you do, Paul is telling the congregation, the church, the people, to the Romans, 
do it this way. Be a living sacrifice. Be a living sacrifice. The second thing that we need to understand as far as what service is, is that service is an act of obedience to God. Yeah? It's an act of obedience to God. It's an act of service that shows how we listen to God's word. Because Jesus says, if you love me, okay, John 14, 15, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. If, if that love towards God is in you, there's no way that you're not going to pick up the apron to serve others. There is no way that you're going to want a comfy seat next to Jesus because it's not going to be very comfortable. It takes a lot of work. And it takes to be humble. Servant. A true servant of God. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. So then how do we go about serving then? How do we go about serving in this love and this obedience? <sighs> hmm. Why do you serve? Why do you go out and serve others? I'm sure we all do it, right, one way or another. If we are in a restaurant and I can see the family, you know, I was paying attention last night, a family was behind us. As they were closing to leave, and the waitress comes and takes the little payment, you know, I, I can see who is the true servant of the family. It wasn't the mom, it wasn't the dad, because, you know, it's, it's kind of like mom and dad, those do things to serve their children. But one of the sons of that family, who I know, they didn't see me, I was paying attention. But the son, the, the, the oldest son, he started picking up the dishes on the table. You know, he could have just leave it and put the, you know, the, the, the cash for the server to come over and pick up. No, he started picking up and putting things together nice and neat. And I'm sure they left the tip as well. You can tell, right? I don't know the agenda behind that. I, I, maybe that's his character. Maybe that's what he does. I don't know the, 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 the guy. I know the, the dad and I know the mom. But I didn't know. But I can, I can see the act of service. I don't think mom and dad asked him. He just took initiative. So when you serve, when you serve, Whatever you do to serve others. I'm not talking just here in church, okay? In your family setting, at work, uh, anywhere you go, why do you do it? Why? You know, what's, what's behind it? What's the agenda? Do you do it because you have to or because you get to? You know, qu question that up. I can see my son has a servant heart, but I can see also the agenda behind it because he wants to be recognized, right? It's a good act, but it has something behind it. He wants to be recognized but what, by what he's done. There's, you know, there's nothing wrong, but really a true servant of God does it in a way that does not receive anything back to us. Um, Matthew 6, 1, 4, okay? If you have your Bible, again, open it up. I'm going to be reading the message translation for you. Okay? I, like, I, I like the message translation because, you know, my, my, Spanish, my Spanish is not that good, and my English is mm, last case. But I like the message translation because it's a lot, a lot easier for me to understand, to comprehend. But this is what it says. Be especially careful when you are trying to be good so that you do not make a performance out of it. We know that, that passage very well, right? It might be good, or it might be good theater, a good show, but the God who made you won't be applauding 
See? When you do something, when you do something for someone else, don't call attention to yourself. Don't call attention to yourself. You have seen them in action, I'm sure. Play actors, quote. I called them. Um, treating prayer. I called them tree, treating prayer meeting and street corners alike as stage, like a, like a stage. Acting compassionate as long as someone is watching. You know, th th there is something, even though they might not get anything, they get their attention, right? That's the, it's the show that they're performing that needs to be watched so people can applaud. Playing to the crowd is like a performing. They get applause, true, but that's all they're going to get. When you help someone out, don't think about how it looks. Just do it. And do it quietly. That's what the message translation is inviting us to. What's the agenda? Why do you do it? Jesus models servant, ser what a, servant, a true servant of God is. Jesus modeled it to us. In the night in which he was betrayed, gathered with the disciples, broke bread, shared, you know, but he went on and did something that he was not supposed to do. That was the job for the servants. Washes the disciples' feet. But when he was done, he said, go and do likewise. Be imitators, mimicking. Show that image of God through your service. So James and John, they didn't get it. They weren't getting it. When you're up in heaven and you're thrown, we want to ask you to do something for us. Give us that special seat next to you. Right? It was, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, guess what? It's not up to me. But if you really, really want it, take the apron, not the crown. If you really, really want it, they said so that we will be <sighs> awarded the highest place of honor in your glory. That sounds pretty cool. One of us to your right and the other one to your left. You have no idea what you're asking. You have no idea what you're saying here. Are you capable to take and drink of the cup that I am going to take and drink? Hmm. Sure, they say. Why not? Mm -mm. That's not going to happen. It's not that easy. I love James and, and John. I mean, they're, they're very out there, and they're, you know, no big deal to ask this. Until Jesus came about and said, whoever wants to be leader among you must be your servant. That's just the way that you, this is going to lay out. And to be a servant is uncomfortable. It's work. Before I was a pastor, you know, and pastor will ask me to do something, I will do it joyfully. But I always look around. What is everybody else? Right? It, it wasn't comfortable. It wasn't easy. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be the, the slave of, all, of others. For even the Son of Man came to be served, but to serve others, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So a true servant of God is one who is a person that joyfully, joyfully does things for the sake of others. Me looking for somebody else around me, was, I was not joyfully. <laughs> This one time, I'm going to tell you, I was here backing him this thing. 
on this little bag. You might think it's still in the back over there. It has a little bag in the back. When I was all done vacuuming the, all, the, all over here, that bag came off. And the, and the machine was on. Poof! <laughs> it's like confettis everywhere. I was, Lord, really? <laughs> I was not joyfully doing that. A true servant of God is one who is a person, a person who is joyfully. And not only that, but it's a light to somebody else. It's a light. And when you are a light, other people will want to be around you because you're imitating, you're, you're, you're mimicking God's love to them. And they want to be around you. They want to do the same. So you're not telling them, come and do this. They're seeing what you're doing. And, and as we know, when Jesus served others, all, everyone wanted to be around. He, he, he was joy to them. He was joy to the world. So when you serve one another, when you do those things, do it joyfully. So other people can see the light, the spirit that you have serving God and whatever that is, or however that is looking. In John 15, again, if you have your Bible, look it up, and, and it'll stay on your uh, history and your phone, and you can go back at it later on and read. But in, in uh, John 15, verse 10 and 11, it says, if you keep my commandments, if you listen to what I'm saying, if you really get what I'm talking about here, you will abide in me and in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and I abide in his love. I have said these things to you that you, that, uh, things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. See? So, as, as true servants of God, not only we need to serve as an act of love or an act of obedience, but we need to do it joyfully. Joyfully. That's when you start seeing the true servant of God. Martin Luther said it this way. We do not become righteous by doing righteous deeds. Okay? That's why we are uh, here in this Lutheran church because as a Roman Catholic I wanted to be righteous with the things that I did so there was an agenda trying to receive something through my doing right so Martin Luther said no it doesn't work like that anymore the Bible actually says the, the opposite of that we do not become righteous by doing righteous deeds, but having been made righteous because of that, we do righteous deeds. So it's that respond to the love of God. See? So when we are true servants of God, we respond to that love in love. That's the only way that we can pay that love back in serving one another given ourselves as the true living sacrifice, which is what Paul is talking about in Romans 12. Giving yourself as a living sacrifice. So we don't do things thinking that's what's going to make us righteous. We just do it because Jesus did it on the cross. Because of that action, you might be already a true servant of God and praise God for that. Because we, we know we have gifted people left and right doing things for the glory of God. But remember, it's an act of love. Okay? That's just the way that you need to start processing your service to God. It's an act of love and it's an act of obedience. And the third is that you do it joyfully. Joyfully. I love this reading, but the song today, did you guys pick it up, uh, the opening song? We are called to act with justice. Okay? No agenda, 
not for you, for somebody else. And, and we say it because our bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, say, you know, we are church. We're still church together for the sake of others. Okay? So we are called to act in justice. We are called to love tenderly. Okay? We are called. We are called to serve, to serve one another and to walk away. What? How? Humbly with God. See? That's what I get trouble. Even though I'm the humblest of all the humble people that you might know, very humble men, right? That's what I get trouble. I want to be humble. But just saying I'm humble or the humblest of all. You know, the prophet uh, Micah said these words that we just sing. And, and it's always to be reminded of that as we serve one another. You know, it's like a checklist. He said, oh, you guys. <laughs> what is good? What does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. The Lord require, require us not only just to do justice, not only to love kindness or mercy or tenderly, but to walk humbly with the Lord. To walk humbly with the Lord as a true servant of God. See, that, that's... Um, <clears throat> So my prayer is that today is that you be challenged. Whatever you find yourself today in your ministry, whatever you feel called to, to challenge yourself from where you are to where else the Lord can use you. Just like in the gospel today, if you picked it up, just like in the gospel, God is ahead of you guiding you, opening doors, doing what God is supposed to do, but you're behind in the work. So no matter where you find yourself, just know God is already there with you, doing God's thing. For us, it's just to follow that, to continue to imitate, mimicking God's love to others. God is already there, preparing the way for you, putting the pieces together that need to be in place so you can act in justice, so that you can love tenderly, that you can walk humbly with the Lord. So what is it that requires us? Justice. You must just do it, right? Love tenderly. Have mercy. Just just love. Just love. And be humble. Grab the Lord and say, I'm here. Take me. I'm yours. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, thank you. Thank you again for calling us to this special place. It's a wonderful place to be where you call us to serve one another. Yes, to do justice, to love but to walk humbly with you. I think that's where we, a lot of us, have trouble. And I ask you, Lord, just to pour that love into our hearts that we understand how you humble yourselves, being in the throne of God in heaven, came in, coming down to be with us and show us what true love is and what a true act of service is. Thank you for this example that you left for us to follow, to imitate, to mimic to others. Thank you for this message, for your word, for your spirit. We always pray in your name. And we all say? Amen. All right, the next song, song is I Will Serve You. So please stand as you're able. And let us sing together um, this wonderful song that I love a lot. So let us sing. serve you because I love you you have given life to me I was nothing until you found me
have given life to me. I was nothing until you found me. You have given life to me. Heartache, heartache, broken people. Broken of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we pray together for the needs of our community, of our church. Um, for those that remember uh, Peggy and Bill Rivers, um, they moved to Washington, uh, I don't know, about 10 years ago, I think, about, I don't know, might be a little less, but uh, Bill passed away about two, two days ago. Um, and so pray for, Bill, pray for uh, Peggy, um, pray for the daughters, the grandchildren um, that are going through this uh, difficult time. So let us, let us pray. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Holy One, for the gift of the church handed down through the ages and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry in its many forms and equip them with your gifts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating one for the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures, we praise you. Provide healing for the earth so that waterfowl, reptiles, wild horses, dolphins, and all living things flourish as you intend. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Suffering one. For all who work toward peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness, and create places of refuge for all people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful one, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness. Today, we want to pray specially for the people in Afghanistan, Stanley and the passing of his mom, Cynthia, for Juan and the passing of his mother, for Lisa Schuett, for Justin Lind, Joyce Miller, for Noah, Delicia, Stephen and Delilah, for Helen and Bob Shoup, 
for Joe and Devin Quarles, for Caleb Hillebrand, for Juan Jr. Lugo, Alisa and her son Braden, Emelda Saucedo, Adriana Hernandez, Diana Burkett, Charlie Ladner, Aiden, for Nayola Lemus, for Jake Dent, and Jan's brother Arnie and Tom, brothers Arnie and Tom, for the Thompson family, for the Marine family, for Bonnie's sister Janet, for Lee Arisa, for Dwayne, for Bob Hardcastle, Gary Sullivan, and Jim and Rosa Stewart, Christopher Neubauer, Carmen Cortes, Jose Maldonado, for Pat, Audrey, and Jim, Beatrice, Catherine Spaulding, Maria de la Luz, Tom and Cynthia Corellis, for Pat, for Linda, for Joe, for Finn Haas, Jan and Lee, for Becky, and for the Reber family, for the passing of Bill. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Sustaining one, for all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage greeters, ushers, office volunteers, bakers, counters, committee and group leaders, teachers, students, evangelists, singers, builders, nurturers, and all who serve with generous hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Risen one, we thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of your saints, continue to inspire us with hope until we all are gathered at your eternal feast. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite the little ones to come this way and share with us a little bit of what they uh, talked about through, uh, during chapel time during uh, Sunday school. So come and tell us. They all served, and they know what serving is. They had a tray. They served the grapes to each other, the napkins to each other, and the little treats to each other. And graham crackers don't get upset. And we are all servants. And, and, what we're going to do, ready? What are you going to show? Um, one of the things that I, I, I love about, uh, about the kids, you know, through Sunday school is that they're excited about uh, what's next. And as I, I was in a meeting for youth, um, 
uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, and they said, well, we need to come up with something for what happens after confirmation. You know, what happens? What do we do with the kids after confirmation? And I raised my hand. I said, well, it's, um, at first Lutheran, we teach them during chapel. We do Sunday school. We do those things. But also we start confirmation as soon as they hit middle school. And then I said, and then when they're in middle school and they're in confirmation, they want the next thing, which is going to camp, you know, going to our camps. And then once they're confirmed, they want the next thing, which is to be an SIT at camp and become one of the helpers at camp. And then later on, they want the next thing, which is to be a servant um, as a counselor at camp. And then the next thing, college, right? And then they serve in their college, in their communities. And it's like, it's a, it's a whole program, you know, that lasts their lifetime. And so um, we're not done with them. So this is wonderful what we do with the kids. So keep doing, keep giving, keep supporting because it makes a big difference in the life of our children, of our members, and the community. So as you come down to get communion, you can put your offering here on the side. I'm going to invite us to get ready for, um, if I can, yeah. I'm going to invite us to get ready for communion. So if you are at home and you have your communion set in place, please have it ready um, to share. We are uh, here at First Lutheran, everyone is welcome, everyone is welcome, children, young and all, um, to come and receive the body and the blood of Christ. So as you come, we make one line in the center aisle, you receive individual communions like this, and, um, and then you go either back to your places or you come and, and kneel down here on the rail um, as we do the final blessing for you. We do have gluten-free for those that are uh, here that can't have regular bread, um, just when you come down, let me know that you need a gluten-free bread. Okay, so let us prepare ourselves to bless the elements this morning. As we know, the Bible says that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant and my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen, amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come to the table and be filled with the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Let us make one line on the center aisle.
Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements for this week. Uh, the birthdays for this week, Juan Quiroz. Juan Quiroz, I know you are in Baja right now, enjoying uh, wonderful weather over there. Uh, be safe, behave, and uh, have fun. Uh, Nayeli uh, Murillo's birthday, and Maya Sanchez, happy birthday, and Celia Castro, happy birthday. Um, we've been uh, asking to donate uh, pumpkins for our preschoolers. We're going to do a pumpkin patch out here for them on for the week before Halloween to take a little pumpkin with them. So if you go to the store, Walmart, whatever you get your pumpkins, buy a little one, it's not a heavy, a little tiny one for the little ones. These are for uh, three years old and four year olds that you know want to be able to pick them up. Um, community rummage sale, as I said last time, this is a time for us to connect, to mingle, to invite. Um, it, it, that's all it takes. You don't have to shop. You don't have to help. You don't have to just come up, be present, invite people. I told last time my story as a, as a secret shopper. Um, I was driving from the beach. I saw a sign that says Church Rummage Cell. So what do I do? You know, I'm with my hat. I even put it backwards, you know, to look more like. And so I come in and I'm like, you know, checking things out and asking for prices. And there was somebody following me around. You know, it's like trying to make a conversation until he made the conversation. Started talking about church and about God and all that. Five minutes later, I was getting a tour inside the church. Now, they didn't know I was a pastor. They, I was just a cool guy, you know, really cool guy <laughs> with the hat backwards. But uh, it, it was really cool. That they invited me to look this because my question is like this doesn't look like a church right what is the steeple I go oh let me show you and they brought me into the office of the pastors and pastor's wife's office and you know the youth room and the children room and the sanctuary I mean it was really cool so that made a big difference so come and just just mingle and tell people about your church that is really cool and the cool pastor that you have um, the 27 is our first Bible study with Ron. He is ready. Um, 3 o'clock for the AMers. And then, um, you know, look at the tidings. I'm not sure if it's 3 or 3.30, but it's on 3 o'clock. And then, because um, I don't have it on the, on the and then 6.30 uh, for the PMers. Okay, so why are we doing it on the same day on Wednesday? And right to almost in the afternoon, both, right? It's because um, one is that Ron wants to come in and be here for that afternoon. So he'll teach one class, maybe go eat, and then come back for the 6.30. When we are allowed, maybe have a class, and then have an hour in between to mingle with the PMers and the AMers or the earlier, and then uh, have a fellowship time together, okay? So that's the idea behind it. But for those that can't drive at night that would like to come a little earlier is at 3 or 3.30. I'm, I can't remember right now what it was, but I think it's 3, 3 or 3.30 on the 27th. So if you go to the tidings, you'll see it there, um, the announcement. Okay, uh, October 31st, um, we are doing the uh, trunk and, oh, trunk or treat. Okay, so get your candies, get your car, decorate it. There'll be prices. I already talked to my mom. And um, she's going to have a dinner for however you are in the family. Um, and so if you say six, like in my case, she'll make a dinner. What's in the menu? I think there's three things or four things in the menu, which is the main, you know, dishes that most people like. So um, you'll get more information about that. Um, the second place, donuts, Dunkin' Donuts. The third place is a movie night with your family, which is a movie with popcorns and all that stuff that you get to enjoy. So 
signed up. There's a, uh, a page on the table for you to put your name down. Let us know that you are participating so we can put the cars in place. Not only First Lutheran is doing that, but also Victory Outreach Church. So the whole parking lot is going to be packed of people, kids, that are going to come and ask for uh, candy. Okay, so safe hopefully for everyone and especially for our community. Uh, sign up for flowers and all that stuff. I think um, that's all I got. Continue to play for the river, uh, pray for the River family. Please stand as you're able. Um, my sister Carmen um, surgery was on the 15 and uh, she's doing really, really good. Um, she was in around 11:30 and then she was out around six o'clock and she was out home. On that same night so um, she's been resting and getting better and so uh, continue to pray for that healing for that re recovering time and um, obviously there's gonna be some chemo after that but uh, we'll we'll cross the bridge when it comes so please stand as you're able let us sing um, day by day <laughs> actually two one and a half so one there one, one over here so <laughs> go ahead I <laughs> uh, just wanted to let you guys know we're getting ready for All Saints Day so uh, one of our plans that we have is to bring pictures of our loved ones that have passed um, and set them in the altar so if you um, could either bring a picture with you next Sunday or um, you can email it to us uh, or you can text it to one of us whatever is easiest and then we can print them and have them ready does it not necessarily have to be people that passed away in the last year we're open it up to all people who wants to have a picture on the altar uh, we're not cel celebrating Dia de los Muertos like in the Roman Catholic Church but it's very similar that we'll put them over here we're not gonna bring tacos tamales
Sunday and then All Saints the following Sunday. So it's, it will be nice to have those pictures here at the altar um, to remember that on All Saints Sunday, we'll ring the bell and say the names of those who are here um, that we want to remember. So email it, text it, bring it with you next Sunday. Um, Pastor Ramon uh, is going to be out uh, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, and Wednesday up in Palm Desert. There is a uh, retreat mainly for pastors, um, and uh, we have Bible studies, fellowship with all the pastors uh, in our city. So, um, but I have my cell phone with me. If, you, if there's a need or anything, give me a call, and uh, we can uh, find the help or whatever is needed. So please, please do that thing that I'm gone and not. People of God, you are Christ's body, bring new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, the living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.